Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing a deck tech of the deck that I'm playing out at Gen Con. There's some vintage trials here for Eternal Weekend. I'm going to be playing this both casually for fun with some friends and then in at least one, maybe two or three of those trials this weekend. Uh, this is kind of an old school hardcore control deck. It is loosely based off of a deck that I found on Moto. I'll look at putting a picture of that into the deck tech or adding a link to that later on in the description if I can find it. I'm actually out here at Gen Con shooting and editing this right before going to play some games. So I'll give you the best documentation I can now and add some more later. Uh, this deck really is designed to try to avoid a mental misstep play hardcore, old school control, light on wing conditions, but the wing conditions that are there are giant threats that your opponent must deal with. Let's cruise through this. Starting off with the mana base, Lotus has to be there, just an incredible card. We're playing blue-red, so both the blue and the red mocks are in. We've got a lot of higher casting cost spells, so Mana Crypt was a clear auto include. This is a card that I have been struggling with a little bit in this particular deck, because it's one of the few things that gets hit by mental misstep, but Soul Ring is so good, it really ramps you two turns that it is worth taking a mental misstep there. The altar was done by Adam Rosenfig. Um, we've got the off-color moxes. Since they're zero casters, I'm very, very happy with them in this deck. They are not entirely essential. I considered pulling them for Simeon Spirit Guides for a while. I've got Talarian Academy there, and Talarian is just amazing given the amount of artifacts that are in this deck. It's a wonderful card. We're playing Control, Library of Alexandria, can just put you over the top. It's one of those threats your opponent must deal with. It's a little bit weaker than it used to be many years ago since the play draw rule has changed, but it is still worth it as an include. We've got one basic mountain here, and then we've got your volcanic islands. An earlier version of this that I put on Twitter was playing three of these. I'm down or four, I'm down to three in this particular version because I'm going a little bit higher on the basic lands. I'm playing a snow-covered island or two and a regular island. They're functionally the same. I just like the snow-covered artwork a lot. Um, we've got the Scalding Tarns in here specifically to fetch either the blue or the red. And we've got 15 lands total here. Ancient Tomb as a two of in this deck is a really rough one. It can just ramp you so quickly it is worth having. Against the aggro decks though, you take a lot of damage. There's a lot of things in this deck that need two colorless though, and the Ancient Tomb is well worth it. Now we're moving into the control aspects of this deck. We're obviously running four Force of Wills because Force of Will is the absolute best counter spell against really unfair decks, and Vintage is full of unfair decks. We've got four mana drains in here, and I'm running both English and Italian because I have three of each, oddly. I should fix that. But mana drain, when you have threats that are over the top, that are four casting cost or higher, the free ramp is just incredible on this card. It is the most powerful counterspell ever printed. The fact that it ramps you several turns is just amazing. Force of Will is incredible too, but this is just the card that makes this deck. Now we've got multiple Dak Fadens in here. Dak Faden is one of the newest cards in this particular deck. Dak is a very powerful win condition, often just burying you in virtual card advantage. You get rid of the cards you don't need and get to the cards that you do, and you can steal your opponent's moxes, which actually matters a lot in this deck, and you'll see why a little bit later on. Consecrated Sphinx is my favorite win condition in Vintage right now. I was playing it in bug for a little while. I had a bug deck that was also running mana drains and the Consecrated Sphinx does a really good job of putting you over the top. You really are two for one or three for one. One final thought here on Consecrated Sphinx is take a look at how resilient it is to a lot of removal that is in the vintage environment. It's not an artifact, so DAC doesn't hit it at all. 
It doesn't get hit by a single lightning bolt. Two lightning bolts are required to take it out. It is a flyer, so moat doesn't get in the way of it. It's just a very solid wing condition overall. It has a six toughness, which means that anybody who's trying to give it minus five, minus five is a little bit sad there. If they're playing sudden shocks the way that I am, it's virtually impossible to take out. And it just shuts down cards like Brainstorm and Treasure Cruise. Your opponent plays a Brainstorm while you've got Consecrated Sphinx in play, you are winning. You've got control of that game. This is just such a fun, powerful wing condition out there. We've got Jace the Mind Sculptor in here as another wing condition or as just an advantage engine getting you to the cards that you need. Uh, I still have not actually ultimated Jace in a vintage game. I usually get him out, brainstorm a few times, and the opponent concedes. Very, very powerful Planeswalker still, and the four casting costs in particular is why he sees a little bit less play in Legacy, where in Vintage he's super easy to get out, especially with all the jewelry that you've got and the Ancient Tombs. Now we've got Sudden Shocks. This is one of the most controversial cards in here. I have been playing this for about 18 months or so in different vintage brews and love this card. Most individuals who have Mentor will pass priority and assume that their instants and sorceries in their hand are going to give them an opportunity, mostly instants, give them an opportunity to create lots of 1-1s. And once they've passed priority, you just take that Mentor out. Very, very powerful. Opponents often have to read this card. Such a great removal card. It hits Delvers and Young Pyros also, which are both really popular in the environment. I've seen Death Rites do a little bit of work in this environment, although they're not that popular currently. It's great to remove Death Rites. The times that Sudden Shock really hurts is when somebody gets to a larger toughness creature. Um, your three toughness, which some of the workshop decks will have, is a little bit more difficult to deal with. Running three copies here. Next card that we're looking at is another one that I'm running three of. Other decks that I've seen are running either zero or four of this card, Flusterstorm. For winning counter wars, this is incredible. It is much better than Mental Misstep in many situations, and it just beats Mental Misstep in a counter war. Very happy with this card. Now we're getting on to the blue restricted cards. Blue has the most powerful restricted cards out there, which is saying a lot. The jewelry is obviously very powerful, but blue just gives you massive card advantage with most of these. Brainstorm is virtual card advantage. It gets rid of the cards that you don't need and helps you find the ones that you do. Treasure Cruise is often an Ancestral Recall and just grabs you three cards, especially when you're filling your deck with fetch lands and instants and sorceries very quickly. Dig Through Time is probably one of the most powerful of these restricted cards. It gets you two answers that you really need in control. You're very, very likely to be up to the double blue in this deck to be able to support it. Time Walk is a solid card, probably one of the weaker ones here though, in that you're not really going for a combo really quickly. It is occasionally an explorer for you to get to that second blue mana so that you can mana drain early on. It's still an amazing card to have in here. And Ancestral Recall is hands down the most powerful blue card. Just nuts. Not the best blue card. I like Brainstorm more because it has an element of skill to it, but draw three for one. This is one of the few targets that gets hit by Mental Misstep, but you just can't leave this out. Often, if you've got an Ancestral in your opening hand and a blue source, you're winning the game if they do not counter it. Now we're getting into some singletons that I've got in here, and these singletons are cards that you see a little bit less in Vintage. As you guys know, I really like singleton theory, which is to diversify your threats and diversify your answers. Try to play cards that 
are as powerful as those that you see in modern decks as four ofs, especially in a style of game like Vintage where you've got 15,000 different cards, there's often a few cards that you can vary a little bit that give you this psychological advantage and give you unexpected plays that your opponent doesn't see. Misdirection. I had Randy Bueller blow me out in a game with Misdirection where I was way ahead on board. He misdirected an Ancestral Recall and it just switched the whole game. This is a fifth force of will in here but often much, much better than that. We've got Mind Break Trap in here. I've been playing this in Modern a pretty good amount and a little bit in Legacy. I really, really like this card. It is a counterspell. It is a free counterspell if they've cast three spells. And additionally, it exiles. So it's better than a counterspell in several situations. You may have a Consecrated Sphinx on board and your opponent tries to Supreme Verdict. This is one of the only ways you can stop a Supreme Verdict. It stops Abrupt Decay, which is less relevant in this deck, although you do have some jewelry here, other things to protect. It stops something off of a Cavern of Souls, which can matter a lot. The Hatebearers decks and some of the Fairer Control-ish decks that play a good amount of humans in them will run caverns, and having exile is a very solid answer to those. I've got a Singleton Blood Moon in here. The deck that I loosely based this off of was actually playing three Blood Moons. Blood Moon is not my style of card. I would much rather have a Threat or a Planeswalker on the board than rely on Blood Moon. But Blood Moon is just amazing in Vintage. Workshop decks, the Eldrazi decks, even the Hate Bear decks are often playing a lot of non-basic lands in them. The card slows down so many decks and shuts out decks like Dredge entirely. It's very difficult for Dredge to go off single dredging each turn, especially when you have the ability to go get answers to them. I really like Blood Moon in this deck, but I'm only playing one given my play style. I would rather have a little bit more proactive threats with some of the Planeswalkers. Snapcaster Mage is another personal addition to this. You've got so many good counter spells. Snapcaster Mage can block also and allows you to replay some of those restricted vintage cards. Snapping back an Ancestral or a Time Walk will often win the game for you. We've got the new Jace VP in here and Jace was a later addition for me here, but given the large number of instants and sorceries that you've got here, you can get massive advantage out of Jace. And Jace is one of those threats that when people see this deck the first time, you are so light on creatures. You may even win a game just off of a Jace the Mind Sculptor. They may pull all of their creature removal and then your Jace early on must be answered or they just lose to massive card advantage. Now we're getting into a group of cards that is really being put together in this deck. They're a lot of fun. I'm going to display all of these together. It's the four Trinket Mages and a Chalice of the Void along with Engineered Explosive. Depending on what you are doing in this deck, Trinket Mage can go grab the jewelry that we saw earlier or a Mana Crypt or a Soul Ring, but it can also go grab the answer that you need right away. A first turn Trinket Mage, drop your own jewelry, then play Chalice of the Void on zero can lock some opponents entirely out of the game. If your opponent has started to go crazy with a mentor and you've got engineered explosive, it gets you back into the game. I really like having this four tutor package to go get the answers that you need or to get you ramp really early on. I strongly considered a Sensei's Divining Top in here and I was running a different build that was heavier on humans. It was running more Jace VPs and it was running a splash of white for mentors. In that build, I 
definitely would include the Sensei's Divining Top or possibly even two tops over some of the other cantrips that are out there. But in this build, I decided to move away from the Mental Misstep targets, and I'm happy with the way it's performing currently. Trinket Mage is just such a powerful demonic tutor in blue that gets you wonderful answers. I really like it in this particular control matchup or this control setup. Now we're moving into the sideboard here. I've been looking at this sideboard a lot. It is one of the uh, weaker pieces of the deck build and may change over the course of this week, uh, especially depending on how much dredge we see here. As you see, I'm heavily prepared for dredge. Dredge can be really, really rough. Uh, the ravenous traps are my favorite answer to dredge currently, especially given that a lot of the dredge decks are playing mental misstep. Tormont's Crypt is also in there specifically because it gets around mental misstep. Graf Stigger's Cage in here is a misstep target, but it's needed for the Oath matchup also. And citing in these seven cards along with your main deck Trinket Mages helps you a lot. Surprisingly also, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Blood Moons are a solid way to help deal with Dredge. So I've got another pair of Blood Moons sitting in the sideboard. Once again, I like these against the Eldrazi decks. I like them against any of the decks that are doing crazy things with their mana base and playing really light on basics. You can usually shut them out really quickly. It's amazing how greedy people can be on their mana bases in Vintage. Moving on, we've got a few other decks that we need to deal with. Um, Storm, you've got so much counter magic in the deck that you've got a pretty good matchup already, but it's nice to have a solid permanent to try to lock them out of the game and then win with one of your permanents. Arcane Laboratory is one of the best ways to do that, and I, I side these in in a lot of cases versus Storm, especially if they're playing basic lands so that the Blood Moon doesn't hit them very hard. The Blood Moon's coming out, an Arcane Laboratory is coming in, one of the Con Sphinxes may even come out, and I'll rely on some of the lower casting cost options there. Although Con Sphinx, if it hits the board and they're drawing cards, you're going to draw into counter magic, and you've got a lot of potential counter magic to draw into, especially if you didn't have to tap out to play that Con Sphinx. So I'm still a little divided on whether one Con Sphinx should come out there or not. And I may pull more like a Jace the Mind Sculptor or a Dak Faden in those cases. As you saw, I've got a pretty good amount of artifacts in here, but I am not an artifact deck. I can survive without my artifacts. I've got a decent amount of land, and I would much rather shut down those robot decks, those stack decks completely by playing Energy Flux. And Energy Flux is just such a powerful card. For the fair creature decks, I'm running Rolling Earthquake. Uh, this is a piece of deck tech that I definitely have to give credit to the Moto deck that I came across. This hits your flyers and non-flyers, and some of the most popular decks right now are playing Delver and Young Pyromancer. The X on here also can have a huge amount of mana in it after a mana drain. Somebody tries to play a threat, you have a counter war, you win the counter war, you mana drain on your turn, you take care of all those pesky mentor tokens that they got during that counter war. They see that counter war as leading to a win for them even if they lose because of their presence on board, but you're able to switch it back around and wipe their board on your turn. This is a wonderful spell. It is great against the Hate Bear decks. It is okay occasionally against Dredge, depending on how they're playing. If they're going for a large number of zombies, I often consider it, uh, although it is n definitely not in my first seven to bring in against Dredge. I really like this card here in the sideboard. Pull out two of my favorite cards here and leave them up front while I close up here. As I was saying, I am out at Gen Con uh, this weekend playing some vintage and playing EDH. If you happen to see me out and about, please drop by and say hello. 
This has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech. Thank you to all the patrons out there that are supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And for more vintage deck techs or other Magic the Gathering news and stories, subscribe to Mythic MTG Tech.